Dr. Hetzel is the director of AES, the American Embassy. Absolutely unbelievable. Sixth Sense, and she was quite right about minority reports. Patty Mays introducing Pranav Mystery's work, the most, one of the 10 best inventors in the world. And <clears throat> I just keep thinking back to the figure that Ashish gave us on the number of children in India who are not going to be educated unless we can harness technology. They say truth is stranger than fiction. The experiences of our next speaker, you actually wouldn't have been able to write about. His name is Eduardo Strauch, and in 1972, he was on a flight to San Diego when the plane crashed. At an altitude of 12,000 feet, Eduardo and the passengers had to survive the most incredible difficult, inhospitable conditions. For 72 days, the world did not know that they were alive. I'm going to just read out something that he wrote about that experience for you. We were starving in earnest, with no hope of finding food, but our hunger soon grew so voracious that we searched anyway, again and again. We scarred the fuselage in search of crumbs and morsels. We tried to eat strips of leather, torn from pieces of luggage, though we knew that the chemicals they'd been treated with would do us more harm than good. We ripped open seat cushions, hoping to find straw, but found only inedible upholstery foam. Again and again, I came to the same conclusion. Unless we wanted to eat the clothes we were wearing, there was nothing here but aluminium, plastic, ice and rock. What they had to do to survive was unthinkable, but they did. And rescuers didn't learn about their existence until two passengers who had survived walked for 10 days, found a farmer, and 72 days later, they were rescued. Their experiences are part of a book called Alive, the story of the Andes, and was made into a film in 1993. The motivation to survive, and what got them through, here to tell you himself. Please welcome Eduardo Strauch. Forty years ago, I was 25, and uh, I was on that plane. Everything was vibrating and rattling and shaking. Outside, the peaks were too close, and the clouds were passing by. Inside the plane, many people with their eyes closed, in attitude of praying, with scared expressions on their faces. I was terrified, just feeling the, the last moments just waiting for dead. After the first impact, we were just waiting the final, the final one. But suddenly, it was silent. We start, after the silent, listening to shoutings, and screamings, and moaning, and people calling the names of other people to see who was still alive, who was st still, who was still alive. Some were alive, and some were not. It 
blood everywhere, injured people, dead bodies of our companions, chaos. When I opened my eyes, I realized that abruptly and totally, my life changed. I had to adapt very fast to the circumstances. We had many challenges. On the third day, this was the situation. We were young people, the age 17 to 25, rugby players. 16 dead, 29 alive. We have no water. We have no food. We have no warm clothing. We have no idea where we were. We had, we had no cell telephones. It was 1972. But uh, on the plus side, we have a wreckage fuselage, like a shelter. We had a small transistor radio to hear the news. <clears throat> But the most important of all, we, have, we had the ingenuity and the spirit inside of each of us. We have many, many challenges, and uh, we had to invent many things to overcome those challenges and stay alive. First of all, we must make water. <clears throat> you need a lot of water when you are at those altitudes, near 4,000 meters. And you might think that uh, We can eat the snow that surrounds us. And we tried, but it was not possible because our throat got swollen. So we must think uh, another way. And we thought about the metal parts of the back of the seats. So we invent a kind of tra a trace. We, we put the snow over those trays. And drop by drop, we drip the water into empty bottles of wine. And the second challenge was to get uh, warm clothing. It's supposed to, we had uh, near 30 centigrade below zero those first nights. And uh, we were just with this kind of clothes, jackets and, and, and uh, a shirt and nothing else. So we took the, all the covers of the cushions of the seats, and they work as uh, blankets. We saw it with a copper wire, and uh, we got our warm clothing. Another thing to solve was to help the injured, the ones who have uh, open wounds, not to other people to disturb them. So we construct amoks with the poles and the nets of the luggage compartment so people won't step over them. We have very hot pain in our eyes, and some they became uh, temporary blind. So we knew about the snow blindness and we must construct sunglasses. We took the tinted plastic from the visors of the cockpit, and with some uh, elastic from clothing and some plastic pieces of uh, folders, we construct our sunglasses. Uh, but the most uh, important of all, We need uh, 
food after four or five days. The biscuits and the chocolates and the toothpaste we've been eating was gone, and we were getting very weak. And we need to be strong to support our mind, our intelligence. So, like a group, we decided that the only proteins we had. Was the proteins of the dead bodies of our friends? It was the only way to stay alive. We want to live. We had that only goal、It、was the goal to reach our homes, to reach our loved ones. So it was the only way to live, and, and we did it. It was the most difficult decision I took in my life, and、uh, it was a very sad moment. But we want to leave, and in a incredible, moving、uh, meeting we had just inside the fuselage, we offer each other: if you die, you can use my. My body to live, and if I died before you, if I live, I will use your body to live. So it was the, the most strong feeling I felt, maybe in, in my life. And、uh, looking back. I see that we invent another thing. We invent a new way of living, a new society. La sociedad de la nieve. There's no society. With the resources we had in that circumstances, we must、uh, we left this society. And we invent new habits, new forms of living. We had to forget about、uh, the habits of hygiene. We have to forget the ways of sleep and eat. Even. Many of us we have to struggle with depression and losing hope and even losing sanity. We create maybe even a, a new culture. That's the new society that works. That was works very well. In that new society, everybody does what he could do better. We constitute a team. Really, it works perfectly well, and gradually, it became it became just like a a unit. In those days, we were just waiting for the rescue. You might think about、uh, the disagreements and the fights, but、uh, we knew that we must spend our energy just in overcoming those challenges. And we couldn't waste energy in fighting or disagreements. So we just spent our energy in thinking about solutions and creating things to survive.
we form a government. It works like in these societies. At the end, the government was the triumvirate of all the cousins, Strauch. We were three cousins. We are the older ones, and it works like the government of that society. We, 40 years later, in our days, the 16 that survived that 70 days, 70 days in the mountain, we shared a very strong bond. We meet regularly. We were, we were young people like you. Nothing special about us. And uh, it's not necessary for an, an, ex an experience, extreme experience like this one to be aware of the power you have inside of each one of you already. Discover it. Honor it. Put it in practice. Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we'll take a short. Dr. Hetzel is the director of AES, the American.